Hello there everyone and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign in Kaiser Redux in which we're playing as the Transamur or the Far Eastern Republic of Transamur right now in which we're trying to get them Ladoros because why not? And I've never played, I might have played Transamur before, I can't remember honestly, but we're going to read everything we have. So we read the Russian Far East has been a major area of conflict during the Russian Civil War. As the location of a short-lived democratic republic, the rising of the Czech Legion and the Japanese intervention. While forced to evacuate the forces due to the German pressure as well as intense resistance from local Cossacks, the Japanese remained eager to extend their influence and, in 1922, pushed for the establishment of an independent state in the Transamere region. This motion gained the support of Vladivostok business community, despite the fact that it left them vulnerable to forming economic dependency in Japan. The majority of the business community never saw, however, saw economic and diplomatic relations with the rising power in the East as a significant advantage, especially when compared to the alternative of being sucked further into their disorder by setting the Russians of Russia. The new nation gained a prominent figurehead in the form of Admiral Kolchak, one of the most successful white generals of the Civil War and the one-time self-proclaimed ruler, supreme ruler of all of Russia, who had been forced to flee the Russia following its unsuccessful attempt to seize control in 1925. And in 36, the Transamere Republic has become a corporate and militaristic state highly tied economically to the Japanese Empire, and yet Kolchak has ambitions of his own. Can he simply be playing a dangerous game uh, using the Japanese protection to establish his own rule first over Siberia then over Russia as a whole? Interesting. I want to talk about Mladorosi, but we do have our supreme ruler here. Kolchak claims himself to be the supreme ruler of Russia for our leader to bolster his image he needs. A strong propaganda machine to help foster an effective cult personality. Everyone should know about his glorious prison and great deeds. Kolchak must be seen as a father of the nation in the eyes of his people. Observer rights and location councils, if you don't know about that, please go ahead. We deserve a voice in Shanghai. The NRA partisan warfare. From the very moment though when the whites seized power in Siberia in the Far East. Oh look at this. And the East Far Eastern People's Revolutionary Army, NRA, funded by the Bolsheviks, operated in the region. With the loss of the Bolsheviks, the NRA continued its activities but completely went underground, periodically arranging political assassinations or attempts on high-ranking officials. Fifteen years later, the NRA is still active and either the lack of the DOROVS or Dovros agents, or the incompetence of the trans by Cossacks, or the lack of infrastructure prevents the explosion and destruction of the terrorist group. In addition, the NRA also distributes outright Bolshevik propaganda, which tries to radicalize the workers of the large industrial cities of the Far East, Chita, Khabarovsk, etc. We must identify and destroy all underground branches of the NRA and get their leadership and execute them before they plunge the Far East into the chaos and Bolshevism. The Bolshevism must eventually die out. The Union of the Mladorossi. The history of the Young Russian Movement is inexorably tied to its leader, the charismatic aristocrat Alexander Levevich Kazembek, born in 1902 to a wealthy noble family of the Azarian Iranian origin. The three ideological phases of the Mladorossi can be closely mapped to Kazembek's own life and experience, unsurprisingly, considering his role as an orator and ideologist. As a student activist, Kazembek helped form the Union of Young Russia in 1923, uniting 29 organizations and 4,000 people. The Young Russians represented the monarchist youth wing, prone to intellectualism and ideologically vague. Its members jointly rejected reactionary Tsarism in favor of a new and dynamic vision. As Secretary Kazembek met with Professor Nikolai Ustroyalov, once head of the press bureau under the Admiral Kolchak. Ustroyalov convinced the young aristocrat to throw his part behind the putsch against President Kerensky in 1924, both fled of Transmir following the failure's coup, to gain their respective supporters along with them. Ustroyalov became a disillusion with the white movement and began idolizing the Bolsheviks as defenders of Russian sovereignty. The formation of the Union of Young Russians in 1925 marked the second ideological phase of the Mladorossi. Kazem Beck began formulating his thesis of the labor monarchy under Ustroyalov's tutelage. The nascent ideology of the Mladorossi combined an absolute monarchy, Soviet democracy, orthodox integralism, Russian nationalism, and the revolutionary spirit during this period of 1925 to 1933. Most Mladorossi were united only by theatrical oath-swearing ceremonies and leadership. A readership of journals such as Viva City and Towards Young Russia. The third phase occurred shortly after Kazembeck's travels to the syndicalist nations of Europe. Kazembeck was particularly inspired by the proto totalism of the French and Italian national syndicates, as well as the British Mosuliites. On his return, Kazembeck formed the Mladoros Party in 1934 as its vaud. His ideas on how to organize the young Russian state is a coalesced into a single party corporatist model under a worker monarch. With strict party structure and growing paramilitary wing, Kazembeck helps achieve control of Transmir and then his beloved homeland Russia. Nationalist monarchist, interesting. Is it actually. Uh -oh. So basically, to do this, uh, we want to get the Mladorossi, so it's how to get the new pat Nat Pops National Volnsiatsky Path. So we got to go for the Mladorossi. The easiest way is having the Oblastniki coup by getting a social liberal popularity above 30, and then there's an option for the Mladorossi to counter coup. So we have all this stuff too. By seizing power in the Far Eastern Republic of Transmoon in 1925, Admiral Kolchak has united various groups of people in a state of constant politics, scandals, and debates. This led to the establishment of nominal spheres of influence in which certain political groups have more authority and influence among the citizens than any of the others. As the groups are different ideologically, the conflict of interest is an inevitable part of modern Far Eastern politics. This makes Admiral Kolchak an important figure in the center of the Far Eastern chaos, trying to bridle ambitions of each group at the same time imposes his own policies. If the situation severely violates the equilibrium of force, the resistance of Kolchak's government will become apparent. So our average Oblastniki resistance, which is what we want, is relatively high. Renovate Yakutian Tarax. Change the popularity of social liberalism, which was the exact opposite of what we want. Oh, cool. Oh, that'd be really nice. 
Take one for the blue clay. Special expedition to seek the precious blue clay fields will be organized. Success, however, is not guaranteed. Use border control with Russia. Complete the Petra Pavlovsk port project. Open as a Batu concession. Huh. NRA plans a sabotage. Japanese presence. Our government is now seen as a legitimate uh, Russian state by the Russian people, and this is made even more apparent by Tokyo's increasing ever influence. We need to create, make sure to put a good show on whilst they conduct the meetings in the hope that they don't suspect any dissent is loyalty. Our old friend is dead. News of the death of George V, the king and exile of the United Kingdom, has recently, recently reached Vladivostok. Once Kolchak's Isla, the monarch guaranteed his safety in 1925 until the British Revolution. His son Edward is now ascended to the throne of Canada, although neither Kolchak nor Edward know each other personally. This resenting, resetting of relations could be the start of a very long period of partnership between our countries. We should send an envoy to negotiate for support. Strong allies are always good in the Merkulov brothers. Business circles in Vladivostok are the origins of uh, such a state as Transmira as it was. As it was they, sponsored by the Japanese government who declared the Transmir Protectorate. Everything changed in 1925 when the territory of Transmir radically increased. And in Vladivostok, in addition to them and the Japanese, the Siberian Army of Kolchak, the DOVROVS, the Cossacks, and the Siberian Regionalists appear. Vladivostok, thus being the capital of Transmir, became a chessboard for all political groups of Transmir. And maybe Kolchak thinks that he is in charge here, but this is a mistake. At the head of Vladivostok is the Japanese guards in the Kwantung Army, which guards the port of Vladivostok, and without its permission, no goods enter Vladivostok. But. Permission is very easy to get, especially if you belong to the Merkulov family, the richest entrepreneurs in the Far East. With a pocket Japanese garrison, the Merkulov brothers are trying to not only subdue the entire Vladivostok trade, but also politics with the spirit of Merkulov's National Democratic Union, being one of the largest allowed political parties in the Far East. Watch them closely, yes, we have a cup of coffee here in our hands. Serbian regionalism. Uh, oh, reporting the meeting with King Edward VIII. Our envoys return with the magnificent news. King Edward VIII has expressed a deep respect for our cause. The king has promised promise that we can rely on him for some degree of military support. It seems that the Entente is now an effective part of our regime. Destination Protograd. The Oblastniki, Siberian regionalists, are those who believe that the entire region of Siberia should be at least autonomous. Uh, after the Putsch culture has given a promise to uh, give wide autonomy to Siberia, however, as cooperation, cooperation with the Japanese and authoritarian rules limited by the dreams of Ozblasniki, the resistance will grow from day to day if Kolchak does not fulfill his promise. But notice, the more promises Kolchak gives them, the stronger their possible revolt will be if the Admiral breaks his word. We only made one promise. The only thing about a government succeed is, is giving promises about the future. The Supreme Rule of Russia. Even during the Civil War, when the hordes of bloodthirsty Bolsheviks were trying to throw Russia into chaos, Admiral Kolchak made an important and responsible decision to become the supreme ruler of Russia before the convocation of the Constituent Assembly to unite the forces of the Whites in the fight against the Reds. The barely maintained peace between the SSR, its cadets, and the military generals lasted until the end of the war in 1920. After driving the Bolsheviks, Kolchak, then Prime Minister Sazanov, and Kerensky were forced to sign the Minsk Treaty. After some time, the Second Constituent, Constituent Assembly was convened, and Kolchak resigned from his position as supreme ruler of Russia. But the next five years changed everything. First, ongoing Japanese occupation of Transmir, in which local businesses seized power, effectively turned Vladivostok into a Japanese colony. Secondly, a German occupation of Russian industry, approved by the Kerensky in the name of economic prosperity. Third, the rampant left wing forces, famine in the Volga region, indulgences for the peasants, the alienation of the property of the rich. All of this led to the event known as the Kolchak Putsch of 1925, and now the Admiral is once again taken on the furrows of the Supreme Ruler, leading the Russian state in exile, waiting for the chance to return to Moscow and finally restore order in Russia. And now we are here, sending agitators into Siberia. With the death of Kerensky, the political situation in Russia proper is more chaotic than it has been in recent years. Some of our ministers believe that the opportunity now exists for us to strike again. We should start with sending agents to push our agenda all across eastern Siberia. If the people hear us, it is inevitable that they will join with us to bring down the corrupt regimes in the West. The result of the efforts could be variable and there is no guarantee of success. Is it risky? Send them. Results of our agitation efforts. Recent reports have reached us making clear that our plans to send agitators into Siberia to spread our ideas was ineffective. The people of Siberia, no matter the anarchy taking hold of the country, seem unwilling to abandon their lives and join us for such a hopeless dream. It seems that we have wasted resources for nothing. We don't need them anyways, you know. Yee. Yeah. anti culture coup, huh? Kolchak is dead, oh boy. Democracy, new military cabinet. The Mayarki. May Moriaki. Crush to NRA. A piece of workers. Oblastniki authority will increase. Austere measures. Seek on support. Draw closer to Japan. So, Siberian Regional Council. I'd like to see increase cultural authority, the cost of appeasing the Oblastniki. Deal with them. Increase resistance. Martial law minority areas. Initial industrialization. 35 days for a factory, military factory, and free infrastructure is not bad, actually. 
Continue the militarization. More war support. Not bad. And chance of war will increase. That's fine with us. Whatever. Um, I really have not looked at this tree at all. It's probably something that gets better, too. I like that, too. Especially NRA. Simeon Knights. Make a military. Elite Siberian Squadron. Obligatory conscription. We're probably going to need to honestly do that one. Stick in the military. Deal with them. Same time, increase resistance. Increase authority of the event of appeasing them. Monthly of Lasniki rally. Actually, do we have a monthly rally? A visit from our masters. In these harsh times, we need strong allies to protect us. Japanese officials in Vladivostok have said that they're willing to give us some support. They would visit us from time to time, but every time we accept them, the air delegation grows stronger and even more ambitious. Oh, in 62 days. We'll get more stuff, huh? Japanese authority will increase, huh? Oh, monthly rally. Every month, the Sniki convene a meeting and prepare a report about this current state of re uh, Siberian regionalism. Okay, so that's going to take a while to do. So we just have to wait for that to get higher and higher and higher and higher and higher. Plan sabotage. Opens the box of concession, huh? Mm, more dependent on the Japanese. Use border control of Russia. Local supplies plus 20%. Remove Yakutian ties. Enforce Kolchak Authority. After sports winning conferences. Well, let's start with Crush NRA. The People's Revolutionary Army is the main threat to the existence of our country. Socialists try to undermine the state the state by terror attacks, but hopefully the recent activities will betray them. Kolchak's Secret Service has already known the location is ready to strike. Uh, and initial industrialization. Kolchak's autocratic government did nothing, almost nothing, to develop our country at all in the 30s, in the twenties. Now, uh, we have a distinctly backwater industry, a situation which was made, which should be rectified soon. Uh, we should start to develop our country step by step, even our progress uh, is slow. Incremental improvements will result in a prosperous country someday. Workers, unrest, and Cheetah. The city of Cheetah uh, is the largest transportation node in the industrial center of the trans Baikal region since yesterday. Uh, the workers of Cheetah demanded their wages be increased and the working day shortened. Must act now on the socialists use this chance to revolt. Try to suppress an uprising. Wow. Oh, I am our paternal autocracy support. Agree to their demands. Oh boy. More, way more stability. You lose 150 political power. Every own state, NRA resistance will greatly decrease. It greatly increase leftist support, too. Holy crap. But that might also increase that support, too. Ooh. We're probably going to fall in civil war if we do that. One. Ooh. Well, we have the PP for it. I think it's been 50 PP on, roughly. Reinforce authority. Support anti Japanese rally. Um, our special agents will work closely with local anti Japanese movements and could fund them to hold a spontaneous route which could weaken Japanese positions here. Uh, renovate tracks. No. Government authority will increase. Is this decrease our authority? No, it isn't. But give more stability. I like the stability. Well, plus, Nikki authority will decrease as well. Decrease 30% chance. Hmm. Thirteen democracy goes down even further. So what do we have here? Japanese authority. From this more autonomy, huh? Well, they're good at the man, screw it. Or somebody's always pretty good to get to. So we have depends on Japan as low, which is good. Electoral grid like in France. We have Oblast Nikki resistance increased, which is not good for now. Siberian army is pretty de decent though, and the All-Russian Nationals movement. The All-Russian National Revolutionary Labor Worker Party, Pe Pe Peasant Party of Nationals, or as they're of, of course commonly referred to as the All-Russian Nationals movement, or the Nationalisti, are an ultra-nationalist political organization who in recent years have become increasingly popular among the citizens of Transamira, formed in 1931 by local politician and Kolchak and loyalist Anastasi Volsinsiatsky. The Nationalist the have found support among Manchurian Russians and monarchist exiles. Young immigrants, so low to the ideals of Russian Tsardom, have flocked to this movement in all of Onsitsky's fiery speeches, denouncing Bolshevism, Kerensky, and the Western capitalism, all of which he accuses of degenerating the Russian people while declaring loyalty to Admiral Kolchak, the Russian Orthodox Church, and restored Tsardom, espousing his homegrown ideology to Russian nationalism. The Nationalists have organized his members into a paramilitary force known as the Black Vanguard, undoubtedly a reference to the Black Hundred. The Black Vanguard provided security to Kolchak's regime of engaging in rounding up political dissidents, as well as prom prominent members of the Jewish Vladivostok community accused of promoting dangerous foreign ideologies. Admiral Kolchak has allowed for these actions to take place without officially endorsing the movement. Perhaps it's because the Japanese authorities wary of an anti-foreign movement. The r true Russian patriots loyal to, the co loyal to Kolchak. It's not bad. 
Ah, uh, I love coffee too much. We'll deal with the NRA. The NRA, I have a generator resistance, nationalists, these guys. So, store Soviet power, Loika. I just want more social liberals. That's really what I want right now. Also, I forgot to put these guys under generals, but it doesn't even really matter. Anatoly Pepelia. Pepelia. Amateur dude, huh? God shock. Crush the NRA. Maybe it was a revolutionary. Oh, look at all this stuff. Um, Army has been a problem for a long time now. Sponsored by Bolsheviks, French syndicalists, and whoever else. They agitated in the countryside and went after coup. They are stronger than ever. We should destroy their influence here and forever, forever now. Oh, okay. Nice. A regular cavalry attack. Very nice. Trans move. We so socialism, more stability, lose and power, political power, of course. We have done already. Get up and fighting the NRA. Why? Why would you do that? Uh, anything else? Cool. Peace of workers. The more friendly towards the government, act less radical. Ob Oblastniki support will and authority will increase. Austerity measures, huh? Initial industrialization, expanding industry in Karbarovsk. Military, civi, mi military, and two infrastructure. Helping fight the NRA. And war all means are good. And to finally finish with the Bolshevik infection in the Far East, we can only turn to one political group loyal to us. There are two options the Simeonov Cossacks will easily deal with the partisans in their native lands, or the Derekts Dovros organized and disciplined military who almost hate the Bolsheviks as much as we do. More loyal, be less loyal. Chances of operation against the NRA will be increased in Chita Vernudinsk. We need Dittorex help. Well, who's more loyal? Uh, Dovros loyalty is moderate. Cossack loyalty is unknown. Dovros will be more loyal to us. We'll go with them. Hey, loyalty is high and the loyalty is questionable. 17% authority, so okay. Oh, I guess we're making stuff here too, huh? Oh my god, do we need guns? Artillery, support equipment, yes. Uh, trains, I guess. Tanks, well, maybe someday. Uh, honestly, I like cast, but like, I think medium tactical bomber is probably where it's at. Um, or Exos arrived in Transmira. After a long period of instability in the mainland, Russia has caused anarchy to erupt in distant parts of Siberia. Um, with the Petrograd regime otherwise occupied or continuing instability in the West, it's quite difficult for them to exert real power over this region. People are losing hope in their leaders and fleeing to our country. More and more refugees and exiles are joining our cause. Welcome home, brothers. Political bombings. Schnikes. The NRA persons are weakening the stability of our motherland. Recently, one of them assassinated a famous general. God knows who will kill next time. I want the head of the bomber on my desk. Exception provision of Captain Rakutsk. Mark Sells is arriving now. Again. Huh. Infantry NRA cells in Chita. Uh, what what, what are percent of it? 17. Not bad. Is this even open here? Oh, Would this one give more political power, stability, and authoritarian democracy? The NRA plans to sabotage. Well, two options will happen 52%. Resistance will greatly decrease. Or 47% greatly increase NRA. 67? 90? I like that 90. 90% is also very good. 76, 81, 95. That's not bad, too. Let me go with, with this one. Conduct your exercises with Dobros. It's 90 or Bob will do. There you go. See what you can do about that. Initial industrialization. A piece of workers. We'll probably do this one. We shall increase the wages to the workers and make our government look more legitimate and friendly towards the proletariat. Hopefully, this will help damage NRA popularity. Far Eastern industry. Social liberalism goes down. I don't like that. Revive trans Siberian Railway. What if any falls to syndicalism? Expand industry here, too. Assuming the United issue. Limit Cossack autonomy. Expand Cossack rights. Sure, Czech Legion loyalty. Railway guns, that's cool. 
Simulate issue. At the man, Simeon, now. Remember the trends by Call Cossacks as supported the Kolchak Pooch. Remember the annex trends by Call Region, however, we're not sure if he's truly they dedicated to a cause, as there are rumors he's secretly supported by the Japanese. 88% is pretty good. We get 1.1 items, still pretty decent as well. 84% is not bad. Slowly appeasing the workers too. NPRN, uh, the wins the Russian elections. Crusade against Bolshevism. Do you know that the Rex declared a crusade against Bolshevism? Armed not only with the rifles and ammo, but also with the faith in their Savior Jesus Christ and vigilantes of the Holy Cross, ready to destroy the cursed heresy of Bolshevism. Destroying any agitation and propaganda of the partisans of uh, the People's Revolutionary Army. Uh, the squads of the Holy Cross bring light of the uneducated masses of the Far East. Long live the new Inquisition. Long live the General Dithorex. Long live Admiral Kolchak. The N it seems that like the NRA is doomed. Limit their autonomy. Decrease the trans call authority. Become less loyal. Well, right now, uh, the lo loyalty is low, and the lo loyalty, loyalty is moderate. Increase authority. Become more loyal. They'll become less loyal. I kind of like the Cossacks. Not extra twenty eight lessons of the Kolchak Puch. Invade the Russian Republic. Reds are vulnerable. Anti Kolchak Kuba. Oh, well, we're working on it. The harbor, the supply network. Not bad. It's not bad, too. We're going to blow up some dark war. Garbarovsk is our second biggest city. Although the word big is difficult to use about a country, we can expand industry in the city to make it more appropriate for future plans. Take the military. Turmoil and Thrones by Kali. The region that surrounds the Baikal region is uh, on a springboard of constant resistance to the Kolchak regime on the one hand. The region is home to the Buryat, the Mongolian minority, the Buddhist people living here. During the Civil War, the Buryat Mongolian state existed for some time as an independent state. With the annexation of Trans Baikalia uh, to Transamir, the activities of the local Buryat Mongolian self government were suspended, but the power in the region was still con concentrated in the hands of civilian Siberian regionalists. Oh crap, this is not good. In addition to the Buryat Mongols and the local regionalists, the lands of the Trans Baikal Cossack Army of Semenyov are located in Trans Baikalia, and the NRI partisans are most concentrated. In fact, the region in the, uh, is in a state of civil war, and we need to decide what to do. We should deal with it. Probably. Probably should deal with it. 99% is pretty good. 100%. Oh, yeah. Workers' demonstrations. Oh, crap. Uh, even though the technological advancement resulted in slow but steady improvement in working conditions, the workers remain very vulnerable to NRA agitation. Demonstrations and seas were organized from time to time, and demanding, uh, and their demands varying depending on who was pulling the strings. Oh, well. Low and moderate for now. 93% is pretty gosh darn decent. 99% is very good as well. Average NRA's resistance is 6%. Ataman Simeonov. He, the leader of the trans Baikal Cossacks, did not recognize the Kolchak government during the Civil War. Out of the foundation of Transamir, he really wanted to join us, subjecting the entire trans Baikalia region to our jurisdiction. In the conditions of an actual civil war in the region, we can give trans Baikalia under the full control of Simeonov, temporarily until he puts things in order there. We can be sure that Simeonov, uh, Semenov, will cooperate with the suppression of the troubles in the trans Baikalia. However, there are rumors that Simeonov is actually coordinated by Japan, and Kolchak is concerned that Simeonov may rebel with the help of the Japanese. Something has to be done. That's the best we can do for now. Don't do anything before we talk to the Japanese. Do nothing. The success of martial law in the Cossacks is not guaranteed. With high possibility, they will try to break free. Moreover, the men can fail another... Let's talk to the Japanese. Assistance, 17%. Who is Simeonov? The Japanese delegation just said no, do not support any Cossack coasts in the territory of John Zemur. And recognize the supreme power of government. It seems that we can do nothing. Well, let's do this then. Definitely a bad idea. Yeah. Then for the masters, yes please. They plan a sabotage. We're trying to kill them off as much as we possibly can. Uh, plus 2% more. Alright, well, we'll see. Um, deal with them. Increasing resistance. Cost of appeasing these guys. It might, we might do this in Siberian Regional Council. Once some of those Siberian Regional supported Kolchak's claims in exchange for autonomous Siberia, as soon as it would be fully controlled by the Siberian Army, Kolchak is a man of honor and understands it without the support of the Blasniki, who never succeeded in his plans becoming supreme ruler of all of Russia. We should establish a Siberian Regional Council to be responsible for all civilian issues without making a country more decentralized. And we're probably, honestly, like, as much as I want to do this one, I don't trust them now, so limit Cossack autonomy. Cossacks possess a lot of power and influence in the regions of their hosts, and Kolchak believes that their power should be limited. What's we'll make the Cossack even less loyal to us? We can sure they don't do any have any power abuse. But right now, their loyalty is low. And these guys are moderate, so. 
Well, since we're here. Five percent, zero, five, twelve percent. There, it's not good. Well, let's see what we do about that. Ensure a Czech lo Legion loyalty. The Czech Legionnaires have supported Kolchak during the Civil War, but they are stuck in the for foreign land for decades and now are somewhat a paramilitary force with no political preferences. But this is only how the, they position themselves. We should be totally sure that in some case, emergency cases, they don't betray us. Hopefully, this will give us more support. Cost of appeasing it. What's in Russia? We wonder without this good head. Quite an adventure. Political bombings and right parts of weaken our stability of the motherland. Recently, William assassinated a famous general. Golly knows how they will kill next time. Oh boy. Oh boy. That's all I can say is oh boy. Reinforce authority. Crush NRA remnants. NRA resistance is greatly less. 8%. Down here is really bad. Zero percent chance. Why is it zero percent chance? Um, gold mining and Bodaibo. Bodaibo. Oh, I forgot about this one. Vladivostok, oh, Vladivostok itself. Oh. 3%, 2%. Should check loyalty be good. Protect businesses, huh? New patch. Or path. With offense, so we're gonna uh, land doctrine. Cause the loyalty is very low. They're high. Average resistance is seven percent. If we do that here, it's gonna hurt us. So we need these guys to like rise up or something. See. God dang it, come on, stop it. Stop, stop with the stupid events. Oh my god. The the Ross. Culture authority. I'm going to go this way, because we did go limit the autonomy, and Dovros became more loyal to us. Uh, deal with Oblast Niki. The Oblast Niki have been a lump in the throat of Kolchak State for a long time now. When Kolchak became a leader of Trans Murray, promised a wide autonomy to Siberia as soon as it would be controlled by Kolchak's white guard. But the moment has come, and though Ch Kolchak knows about his promises, the Oblast Niki are the ones that support liberals and socialists, our main enemies. Oblast Niki are becoming more and more pretentious and therefore dangerous to us. So, you know what? No matter what happens, I'm going to save anyways. And we're going to read quite a few focuses as we're trying to get to him and get rid of Kolchak eventually. So. If this is the wrong thing to do, then so be it. I'm gonna go back and uh, go back to save. Previous save. Hello, Rus. Mal Mal, we're about that, but you're at 23%. It's not bad. Just gotta give it above 30. Workers' demonstrations. Even though technological advancement resulted in stuff, we're gonna do that, but good ahead. God dang it, we're down to 21 now. Bruh. Dovros become more loyal. Sure, why not? Little oh, Blasniki issue. The Blasniki are demanding more and more from our government. At first, they demanded their own local committees. Other than local dumas, they're now asking for local governors. Their influence and therefore resistance is growing from day to day, but. We get, but what we give them what the Russian Republic never did, the widest autonomy. There are many of Oblastniki in the Council of Ministers, lobbing the separatist influences. Perhaps we could finally start to limit this pathetic movement. We better calm down with their demands. Complete this decision would greatly anger Oblastniki. Everyone state Oblastniki authority would greatly decrease. Popularity of social liberalism increases by 10%. Oh, that pisses them off. 
That really... Oh, 31%. So... 31% is pretty flipping high, not gonna lie. Put on a stage, more autonomy. So now we're at 33%. Increase the authority in Yakutsk and for Nudinsk. Of martial law. Because this says. Down here. How do I get. Whoever. Whomever. There's a miracle checks authority. Don't get off them or so I popularity too high. If either a Cossacks or a Dobros Lotus is questionable, very, low, very, very low, the coup will happen. Japanese lapdog, Transmir, Transmir, and Yakushia. Um, so, how do we get these paths? For how to get the new Napa path, go to Mladerosi. Q gain silk, a little bit popular about 30, and the option for Mladerosi to counter coup them. Well, in the meantime, we're going to talk about lessons of the cult Jack Booch. Nah, we're going to go with. Dockyards? Also, naval base, Eastern Harbor. Let's go with continued militarization. Far too long, we've relied on the Japanese for protection. We need our own army. Let's take time and effort. Of course. Move tracks. Mark says arriving transmuter, nice. Oh, that sneaky's very high up there. Um twenty-five, twenty-six percent. Fifty-five percent chance. We could try it. It's probably a waste of political power, but it'd probably blow up an infrastructure. Anti culture coup. Ah! A little bit of sneaky resistance have been too high for some time. Their disapproval of the culture has risen a lot. Now they open a revolt against us. Culture can submit and give, de facto give their reins of power to them or surprise the movement. They see the movement. Remove anti culture sentiments. Remove ex resistance extremely high. Anti culture coup and chance of mirror. They defeat the rebels. Chaos of the Mladerosi. See its power. Look at this one. How to get the Mladerosi or the Mladerosi? I'm not sure. Into power. Change the popularity of totalism. Oh boy. We've been trying to kill off the NRA, but whatever. The entire time. My bad. I didn't know what I was doing. Tsar and Soviets. Too many Mladerosi is a group to ridicule to even exist, but somehow in the chaos of the coup, they've managed to secure power. Now Alexander Kazan back in his group will seek to reform Transmir into the radical vision. The Mladerosi at the helm, the two seemingly contradictory reports of monarchism and socialism shall finally be brought together. Look at that. Look at this guy, Alexander Kazembeck. If you want about him, please go ahead. Tsar and Soviets. Wow, it hurts our political power. Oh, so this is, is this this was the NRA. We were trying to kill them off as much as possible. Now we're totalists. I love being a totalist. A totalist. I guess I should really say. Ah, we're down here. So hopefully, I wish I would remove the other trees so we don't have to see them as much, but whatever. The Red Tsar Triumphant. Oh, social monarchy. Point Regency to elected Tsar. The Vladivostok Conference. Modern Bogatir. Party of order. More political power plus points for six. Ally the nationalitsi. Interesting. National populism. Ally the national maximalists. That's a lot. Oh my god. Look at that political power gain. Plus 20% division recovery rate. Ally the Czech legionnaires. Oh, that seems okay. Pan Slavic solidarity. By our hand alone. Taking defense is nice. Eurasian Brotherhood. Wow. A revolution of the spirit. The Vladivostok Conference. Due to Kazanbeck's current situation, of course, he has selected to call a meeting of the Mladorosi allies to better decide Transmir's future. However, the Mladorosi were not the only ones invited. Other prominent political factions, such as the Evratsitsi, the Nationalitsi, and the. Oh my god. Smenevskovsi were invited to attend the conference, even though many of them do not agree with Kazanbeck or the Mladorosi's politics. However, he's painfully aware that he needs allies, and that at the end of the conference, one of the factions will be invited to collaborate with Kazanbeck's government. People to start with Transmir. Ah, that's that one. Nice. So now I get point one four. Oh my god. Promise more autonomy. Destroy separatism. Ah. Remove extremely high resistance. That's probably what we want to do. There you go. Nice. The Mladorosi government denounce the false Russian Republican government. Social monarchy, the GMC increased to denounce the false government. Continue militarization, of course, and the GMC pro imperial propaganda. Hold massive parties. I love parties. Establish a monarchy. Ah. 
Social monarchy. Well, let's do this one first. Because I want to. Alright, so what type of ships do we even have? I even forgot that we had ships. All these ships suck. Okay. There we go. That's how we do it. The social monarchy. Uh, the more exiles arrive in Transmira. Oh, very, very nice. Welcome home, brothers. Brothers. Time's now to make Transmira true tsardom of the people. The Mladoros have earned enough to sway to insult true workers' tsar and begin the process of reclaiming the throne in all of Russia. And soon enough, we'll be truly embodied the spirit of a social monarchy. More anti Japanese rally. Yeah, that'll be nice. Join the co prosperity sphere? Uh, we're okay. Argutsk. Novozubersk. Moscow. Petrograd. Well, we can wait for that one. What do we have here? Um, Grand Battle Plan seems like the way to do it. Especially seeing as, like, we get better reduction in supply consumption. Which is probably the only reason why I do it. Mobile warfare is nice and all, but we're probably not going to go that way. Um, see this. Fear power. Fire power is good, too. But we don't have a good industry. I'm going to go with the Grand Battle Plan for this campaign. Most stuff like Kamal sees the power, eh? Oh, look at that. Army modernization. Oh, that's really good. I didn't even realize we get that stuff. We got a lot of war support, though. The Grand Cons Conference of Vladivostok. The Mother Rose needs allies and needs it badly in order to get such allies. Our Grand Region has called for a conference of all radicals, like themselves. The big three among the conference are the Panslavas, Czech Legionnaires, who still exist in exile in Transmir, the Nationalists, the Eastern Slav supremacists who advo seek advocate a Russia for Russians and only Russians and believe that Eastern Slavs are a master race, and last but not least, the last, uh, not least, but the National Maximus faction of the Eurasianists. Men who advocate for an empire not of Russia, but of Eurasia, from the British Isles to the Japanese islands, and from the northernmost Russia to the southernmost India. What happens to the current Shah of lasting effects on Mlad's efforts to retake Russia from the growing, or from, or from take Russia from the Moscow government's rule and build a modern Russia? Ala Nasnitsi, Panslavists. Uh. Wait, what, what was the third option? I want the third option, what the heck? Oh, maybe we need to do the modern Bogatir first. Resplendent in blue uniforms is eponymous, eponymous. Blue shirts evoke the legend of Bogatir, patriotic, devout, and courageous. I haven't realized in the National Revolution that blue shirts will be formed, reformed from a party militia march. to transmit into troops. Oh, to the boss. Oh, our march on plow, proud blue shirts. A strong boss requires an equally strong army, and an army loyal no matter what challenges they may face. An army that will stand shoulder to shoulder, prepare to die for the leader in the nation, of course. Uh. An army that would follow the bazaars of the greatest of heck without a question in order. That is an army of which Kazembeck has forged the blue shirts, named due to their dark blue shirts, along with the red arm bands and red trousers. Red, white, and blue. These titans of men represent the strength required to restore the Russian Tsardom, but these men know or no elitist sycophants. Uh, <clears throat> That are previously still behind Tsar, the blue shirts are composed of rugged uh, working class proletarian workers who have evolved out of the brawls in the streets of Vladivostok into disciplined soldiers waving the banner of Russia and the Mlad Rossi. Inspired by both Ivan the Terrible's devoutly loyal Oprishniki and the ultra nationalist militias of the Black Hundreds, they may lack expert training in state of the art equipment, however, they make up for the faith in Mother Russia. Well, we walk the line. Also, uh, the Japanese uh, Council of Non Aggression back with us. So that's not good. Uh, other than that, oh well. Uh, let's see, let's see, you guys. Infantry. You guys, cavalry expert. Which cavalry's not bad, but they're irregular militias, which I don't like. So the Russian state now has fallen to this guy. Not good. Members of the other Russian Revolution. Um, so hopefully, divided naval staff, divided military staff, which is good for us. Treaty of Minsk is good. Uh, backwards industry, which is good for us too. Unfinished land reforms is good for us too. Okhrana, of course, and for further stabilization. I mean, they're going to get better over there, but still. Stop your monarchy. Yeah, we'll get there. Next. And then, then we'll do the whole uh, Vladivostok conference. Because I do want to ally the National Maximalists. So, we'll see. The Triumphant the Tsar on the Imperial Economic Council. Construction speed will be nice. So better prepare industrially for the liberation of the homeland. The Tsar is the creation of all Imperial Economic Council that will oversee the transformation of the Transmir from a barren backwater to an industrial superpower. And once Transmir is fully industrialized, we can move on. Uh... To create and, and destroy the false government in the east, the Regency Council formed. Until the Tsar can be crowned, and the Russian Regency Council, headed by the Grand Regent Alexander Kazanbek himself, has been declared. The Regency Council is not expected to last, however, with many believing that the coronation of the Tsar being right around the corner. A social Tsar goodness. The GMC will decrease no matter what. Denounce the false state 
false Russian state government. Grand Duke Karel Vladimirovich is crown Tsar. Oh, look at this. Inside one of the buildings of Vladivostok, which of Vladivostok politicians, industrial figures, and socialites gathered around to have a party, albeit a small party. Uh, here, uh, Vladimir Karelovich was now crowned Tsar of the Mlad uh, Rossi, Russia, and all of our Soviets. It was a celebrating party similar to that of the birthday party, but it was filled with drunken Slavs, kissing couples, and other such hedonism. I didn't quietly soon after the, with the formal coronation of the Tsar himself in a speech from Cousin Beck about bringing Russia to modernity and bringing it to its greatest time since the time of Elizabeth the Great. Glory to Karel the First. Nice. Wow, look at the political power of civilian war support. Nice, nice, nice. Good. And pro imperial propaganda, more totalism, more support, but I really denounce a false Russian state government. That'd be nice. But right now, we do have medium legitimacy, which is not terrible, but still. Grand region Kazanbek needs Soviet nobles to lead the Soviet Empire. The demographics in the Far Eastern do not permit this ability to easily bring Russian nobility into our leadership. To fulfill our ranks with sufficient Soviet nobles, we must alleviate, elevate those into our noble class. There are two choices the Grand Region could fulfill to Mlad the Rossi needs. We can either elevate the most hardworking people of Russia, or of Chanzumur, to the status of noble, or elevate and grant titles to local politicians then, who will make uh, the nobles. We need political favors, Ele elevate them in nobility, 100. Grant titles to the hardest working people of Chanzumur. We already have 89%, which is pretty decent. I want the political power though. So hold massive parties. A legitimacy would decrease. Never do that one. It's not bad. I'll do this one. More legitimacy, yes, please. Now we medium legitimacy. Hope it goes higher. Defense against country, minus one percent. This spirit represents the amount of people who view us as legitimate rulers of Russia. Oh wait, why do we do this one? I want to do a Vladivostok conference next. Oh well. Cousin Beck on seven comes NRPR, a quotation from a Grand Region. Sevenkov is nothing more than dirty and evil Bolshevik who aligned himself with the devil. They're satanic devil worshipping nationalists who would bring Russia to ruin and kill everything we hold dear. Death of Sevenkov and his white wolves. The god darn satanic nationalists. A pro imperial propaganda. Yes. Russia announces their ambitions. Traditional proletariat values. 1.15 every single day, nice. Play logistics, not bad. We'll go army logistics to help attrition out, whatnot. High legitimacy. Wow, that a massive boom for political power and stability and war support. Defense bonus against the country, 30%. Holy crap. Karel Alexander Kazanbeck looking kind of nice, too. And I wanted to do this one. Party board is not bad, though. So, uh, social democracy. That gives you a lot of more political power. Tons more political power. But more construction speed is only 2%, though. Orthodox integralism. All of the national maximalists. The Eurasians desire the establishment of a brotherhood of Slavic and Asian peoples to act as a bulwark against the Western mercantilism. Their adoration of heroism and spirituality and hierarchy have been noticed by the Vaz and the, by Japanese ultra nationalists close to the Emperor. Uh, if you wonder about this, Barky, please go ahead. Uh, uh, yeah. However, we should better ally the national maximalist wing of them, which would better represent our ideals. Yes. Be line for as much political power as possible because we are a little bit insane here. Happy 1937, everybody. Uh, battleships. I like battleships. Battleships are nice. Totalism. More war support. Or we get more stuff down here, too. It's not bad. Industrial company. 15 and 10% for military and civvies. Not bad. The Grand Conference. Okay, this is. I don't understand this. Where's the maximalists? Well, that's not cool. 10, 15, 10, 10, 10, 10. National Maximus. I want to do this one though. By our hand alone. It's still not bad. Either one of these is not bad, really. Do they have no influence here or something? Syndicalists? Radical Socialists? Oh no, I want to take a look see to see why we can't get this one. Because I do want this one. I don't want these two. I want the, the, this middle one. I might just force it, you know. Uh, traditional proletariat values would be good to do as well. Lessons of the Kolchak Puch. Since the Kolchak Puch, we have some order conflict with Russia, but we kept Far East, and now we know the weak spots. Also, I also did expand military staff and modernize equipment. We have a lack of proper officers, commander troops. We must train a new young generation of officers. Uh, modernized equipment. We have not upgraded equipment since the 1920s, and many of our weapons are obsolete to say the least. We cannot achieve any of our objectives if we have ineffective weapons for our soldiers, which I'm going to do this one as well because we get better. Production costs for infantry equipment. Recently, we successfully developed a brand new firearm for soldiers. Although they are currently just prototypes, we can invest some money to produce them in proper numbers. Northern expansion, recruitable population. It's not bad, dude. Drill the troops. I like that too. Our nation is exhausted by fighting men, and our current drafting rate appears to be insufficient to populate our armed forces. If we had conscription by requirement, we'll have to more troops to fight against our enemies. 
expand far eastern industry. The ocean far east is just a vast way of snow and tundra, but the event, but even in this harsh climate, we can open some new facilities to develop our industry. Improve the Nikolaevsk port. The port of Nikolaevsk is in poor condition due to the lack of use by its former owners, but a development will enable a new naval base to be established. Expand industry around Lake Baikal. We now have a very developed industrial region where Kutsk in our hands. There's already been a strong industrial potential, but we can improve it even more if we open some new facilities and develop Cheeto. These lands are in very poor condition after decades of neglect by the corrupt Russian leadership. I think it's a long time to build up this region, but we can begin anew. These are all tractor plants. If there's one thing that Russia does not like its land, we shall set up safe sponsored factories and steelworks deep within the heart of our nation to produce mechanized vehicles far beyond the reach of Europe. Wow, that's a crap ton more steel. Improved supply network. As more of the Trans-Siberian Railway becomes part of our country, its usefulness becomes increasingly apparent. We can now even have potential to create a national-wide railway uh, supply system to deliver goods all across the country, eventually. Siberian scientists, of course, too. Our recent conquests have brought many wise minds into our scientific facilities. We can use them to improve our, the practical abilities of our scientific endeavors. But, you know what? If you enjoyed the video, leave a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And I'll see you tomorrow to see what else we can do with the Mladorosi. Thanks for watching. Have a great, great, great rest of your day.